Hello. This video is to show you how to make the graphs and do the stats for the length tension lab. So this is what your raw data should look like. You should have a table with a couple blank lines, the dominant arm, non-dominant arm. Sometimes I have students zero out for the zero degree and the 90 degree angle. Other times I leave it in and we do 80 degrees instead of 90 degrees. So I will show you with this one, then I'll show you what happens when you do the graph the other way. And then I will show you how to do the stats. The first thing we want to do is take the average. We have different people lifting the weights and we just want to see an overall trend. So this person was quite a bit stronger than this person. So we want something called the mean, which is the average. The easiest way to do this in Excel, you highlight the column, you go to formulas, and there should be something that says auto sum. Different versions have to put it in a different place, but it's usually this big giant thing. You click on it, you go average. Now this box is the average. A neat trick with Excel is I can now copy this box by clicking on it and hitting Control C or Apple users Command C, then highlighting other boxes I want to have the same formula, and then pasting, which is Control V or Option Command V, I believe. So that gives me my average. Same thing down here, and that way I don't have to retype it each time. Another thing I'm interested in is just the standard deviation. So to do the standard deviation, click on that box, and I am going to hit insert function. And I have standard deviation right here because I've reused it recently. Otherwise, you type in standard dv, and it should pop up right there. And it wants me to put in the lines I want. It's actually going a little bit too far. It's going all the way down to this line. So I'm going to click on that box, highlight the cells I want the standard deviation of, and click OK. Now, again, I'm going to copy, paste, and these are humongous standard deviations right here. They are absolutely humongous standard deviations but that's probably because we have people with different strengths. Now, I want the graph of how much force they had at each angle. That will be our y-axis versus the angle, which is going to be our x-axis. So I am going to highlight my dominant arm, and I'm just going to go to Insert, Line Graph. Mac users, they hide this a little bit, but you can pretty easily find it under insert graph or insert chart. And you could pick this one or this one or this one. I like lines, so I'm going to do this one. If you're doing the paper, do not do the 3D line, please. So that is our graph. Now, I accidentally missed a point there. So I'm actually going to fix that problem. I'm going to go to Select Data, which I need to do anyways. I'm going to Edit Series 1. If I need to do that anyways, I'm going to call this Dominant Arm. And I'm going to click on that and actually highlight the whole thing. Much better. Now, I have the x-axis 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I need to fix that. I highlight my x values and I get my nice standard length tension curve. Builds, plateau, drops, and then this is because of our series parallel elements that it's going back up. Now I need to add my non-dominant arm. So I'm going to go in, select data, add non-dominant arm, Click this box, highlight all the values, and click OK. And it looks like the non-dominant arm for this class is actually stronger than the dominant arm. 
The reason for this is often there are several servers in the class. Now I have a problem here. My origin does not hit zero, zero. So I actually am going to go in, click on my axis down here, select, click on my axis, select format axis, and I'm going to click on the tick marks. Now I could also change my scale here if I really wanted to. I could, but it looks like the scale is good, so there's no real need for it. The last thing the graph is going to need is the titles. We need a title here for this axis, a title here, and a title on the top. To accomplish that, I have preset titles up here. Oops, I want that one. And then it just lets me type in, this is the angle, this is force, I believe this class used pounds. And if you really want to, you could get rid of those little bars. And this is the graph. I will then copy it into Word. Now, some years I use different angles. The graph might look like that. And this year I didn't have them zero out for the zero degree angle. But again, it builds tension, it drops down. This way, it doesn't give you the nice plateau effect as the other ones, but it's pretty much the same effect. We're building, 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 dropping, dropping, dropping. So you now need to do your stats. So you're going to go to this website called GraphPad. I gave you a link for it. And here it is set up for one, two, three four, five groups. Now, if you need to change the number of groups, you go up to here, group number six, three, two. It depends on our group. However, we have one, two, three, four, five. Ooh, we have six groups. So we're actually gonna need to change that to a six. Now, we're gonna put all the values for the zero degree here. And it's zero, so zero comma zero comma zero comma zero comma zero comma zero seven zeros because there's seven groups now for group b i really don't want to feel go back and forth between these two so i'm actually going to copy all those numbers Control c paste them over here and just do comma delete comma delete Oh, interesting. Comma, delete, comma. Make sure there's spaces. Comma, space, delete. Comma, space, delete. Comma, space, delete. And I'm going to repeat that for the next set of numbers. Control C, Control V, and I'm going to magically have the rest appear. So I have all my values in. I'm going to click Calculate Now. So what we basically did was we took, we're comparing all of box A to box B, box C, box D, box E. And it gives you some interesting statistics here. The one I care about is the probability. And basically what this is looking at, do we have a significant variation between each for this line, this and this and this and this and this. For this line, this one, this one, this one, this one. For this line, this one, this one, this one, this one. So that's what this ANOVA is looking at. And because I have a p-value of 0 0.0001, that means I have a highly significant difference. So I did increase or decrease tension as I went across. Now, I do not want this whole page printed out. All I want is one single, we ran an ANOVA for the dominant arm. The p-value was 0 0.0001, which is a significant difference. And just for the fun of it, I clicked make a graph on the bottom. This is actually our graph right here where the dots are. These are standard deviation bars. And as you can see, it deviated a lot, but even with the deviation, it wasn't quite at the next level. 
Here we have more of a plateau. See how the bars are overlapped? Force goes down, force is going back up. So you don't have to do that. Thank you for watching this video and have a good day.